My talk really was focusing on the sort of new genomic insights in follicular lymphoma. Um, over the last sort of five to six years, we've um, had um, the ability to use new um, technologies such as next generation sequencing to interrogate the, the tumors, so the follicular lymphoma tumors. And um, what I was tasked with doing was really to um, explain to everyone what's new in the field of the genetics of follicular lymphoma. So one of the things that came out from all of these studies is that um, a follicular lymphoma that is normally thought of as a tumor that's characterized by a particular genetic translocation, what we call the 1418 translocation, actually occurs with um, cooperating um, genetic alterations such as genes or mutations in genes that are involved in epigenetic regulation. And so that's one of the key take home messages from, from my talk today, was that uh, follicular lymphoma is really a, a tumor that's um, where you have epigenetic deregulation. I think one of the key things is that what we understand is that there are actually lots of biological pathways that are altered in follicular lymphoma. Epigenetic deregulation is one of them, but actually we have um, deregulation in the mTOR pathway, um, the JAK-STAT signaling pathway, and all of these pathways have potential, uh, they're what we call actionable, mutations. In other words, we can have potential targeted therapies that could try to reverse or abrogate some of the effects of these alterations. So I suppose the key take home message is that we have all of these genetic aberrations, but we also potentially have other targeted therapies that could be directed towards these aberrations. So the key thing with follicular lymphoma, although the patients actually do very well, we now know that there are a subset of patients, maybe about 20 to 25% of patients who do badly. And I think we need to try and prioritize our efforts in trying to improve the outcome for, this, for that particular cohort of patients. Part of my talk was trying to propose what the next steps for the future would be. So one of the things I think we next need to do next is we need to take all this genetic information and we need to try and identify what are our new prognostic or predictive biomarkers because once we do that then we could then um, classify patients into different categories, you know, put them into you know, a, a low-risk genetic group, a high-risk genetic group because that way we can then say uh, patients with uh, poor risk genetics could be treated in, the, in a more aggressive way, whereas those with low risk genetic features may not need to have such an intense uh, treatment regimen. So I think that's where we are going towards in the future. We need to be stratifying patients according to the genetics of their cancers.